Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. A sitting United States Congressman, Warren Davidson, has stated that Ripple is creepy and evil. In fact, so as to make sure I don't bury the lead here, I'm going to tell you the exact quote verbatim right now because I transcribed it. Here's exactly what Warren Davidson said uh, in a, a Twitter space as well. Twitter's now known as X. But here's what he said publicly. Quote, the creepy thing that I don't like about Ripple personally is that they're helping governments develop central bank digital currencies, which is evil, end quote. So he has some interesting views, and I'll say this. He is completely off base. And it's not my job to defend Ripple, but I, I'm just telling you my honest opinion. He is way off base when it comes to this. And there's other stuff he said, which I also transcribe which is even more ridiculous, and frankly, he should feel a bit embarrassed because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to XRP or the XRP ledger or how Ripple is interacting with its customers on an institutional level or central banks. He, he just, he has no clue and he has demonstrated that. He thinks that Ripple has some sort of special power over the XRP ledger, in fact, and he wants to halt technological progression. I just, I can't get behind that. I can get behind... Uh, the idea of, yeah, there are seriously bad things that could happen with central bank digital currencies. I've been talking about that on this channel for literally years on end. It doesn't mean that there isn't a proper path forward. And I want to share with you my thoughts, but uh, along with what he said, and it's it's a bit of a train wreck, what he said. It's very disappointing because I tell you, he's got some strong opinions. He just hasn't done the work to figure out whether or not those opinions make sense. He just has them and he's espousing them publicly, which is why I'm now talking about it. And I challenged him publicly, and he hasn't written back to this point. Uh, it hasn't been that long, and he doesn't owe me a response. That's fine. But um, you know, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so uh, DAI uh, shared the relevant clip, and he... Um, <laughs> He's not too happy with Warren Davidson either, and I share his perspective, actually. Um, here's what DAI tweeted out, along with the clip. He and by, Oh, actually, let me give you a little bit of context for this, too. Warren Davidson, in the past, has said some very ridiculous, incorrect things about XRP. And by the way, I actually did an advanced search on X, checking his history for all mentions of XRP, and there weren't that many. And I, I'm wondering either there's a technical glitch with X right now and it's not pulling up proper search results or he must have deleted them because I and I'll tell you what, it makes me want to dig through my own videos because I have I've covered his nonsense tweets. I, he, he said some within the last, I don't know if it was a year, year and a half. I can't I can't be sure off the top of my head how long it's been, but he said some nonsense stuff having to do with Ripple and XRP. And I remember correcting him and taking him to task at the time. Um, so he may, he may have just deleted it here, but he's been anti XRP. This is not the first time. And so DII said he finally says it. The same congressman who would, who never would call for an investigation of ETHgate corruption, despite all the video evidence and timelines, is now calling Ripple evil after their SEC victory. Warren Davidson, wow, and he did tag them there, as did I later. You'll see. Uh, central bank digital currencies are no different than any other technology like nuclear. They can be used for good or for evil. This is shameful. And look, I know that uh, in the world of crypto, this is going to be somewhat divisive, but I actually agree with DAI here. Technology can always be used uh, for good or evil. I'm going to flesh out my thoughts on that. Um, but uh, he here's, here's my initial response. So I retweeted DAI there, and, um, and I tagged... U.S. Congressman Warren Davidson. And again, he doesn't owe me a response. I don't expect it, but he's airing this stuff publicly, and so am I. I want to get my perspective out there as well to push back because I think he is wholly incorrect on this topic um, in terms of shutting stuff down. Where he's not wrong is addressing uh, concerns that could come with a new technology, in this case, central bank digital currencies. I'm on board with that. I bitched about it too and expressed my concerns. It doesn't mean you don't find a way to make it work. But anyway, here's what I wrote. Well, Warren Davidson, you've illustrated your ignorance about XRP, the XRP ledger, and what work Ripple is doing with both institutional clients and central banks. You said verbatim, and this is a quote from these spaces. This is literally what he said. You said verbatim, quote, 
It looks like a certain amount of control being exerted by Ripple over how XRP can even function as a token within that Ripple's really trying to develop for the institutional investor, end quote. And upon hearing him say that, it's just another one of those moments where I'm just like, face palm, <sighs> audible sigh, you know, that the eye roll stuff, all that crap. Uh, and, and so then I continued because that was ridiculous. He literally stated that uh, Ripple's exerting, uh, you know, control over XRP specifically. And so I wrote, Ripple has no special permissions over XRP or the XRP ledger because it is decentralized. They do not get to choose whether or not institutional investors have exposure to XRP or what form of interaction with XRP, uh, what form interaction with XRP may take. Zero. XRP has nothing to do with Ripple's central bank digital currency work with central banks. The XRP ledger is a separate blockchain from any blockchain a central bank may end up using for a central bank digital currency, even if Ripple is working with them. And then I put a little face palm emoji because it seemed like the right spot for it. I think that out of everything I wrote, that's the right spot for it. And, and look, it is true that Ripple hopes to have XRP positioned as a bridge currency for, for central bank digital currencies, but they want XRP to be a bridge for everything. Just about, I mean, I think that's, that's probably the big picture. I mean, yes, obviously converting from one fiat currency to another, but who knows, potentially swapping from all sorts of various assets. But, but here's the thing, that's not, that, that's not something that, it, it doesn't make XRP somehow specifically or inherently tied to central bank digital currencies. In fact, um, as Jack Mahlers is doing right now, um, he's basically copying Ripple's business model, utilizing XRP and the Lightning Network to do the same thing Ripple's doing. So you could plug in Bitcoin and use that as the bridge for central bank digital currencies. Or you could use ETH. Or you could, you could use anything you want. There's nothing inherent about Ripple uh, or, or what they're doing with XRP that makes XRP somehow uh, you know, inextricably linked to central bank digital currencies. That's just not true. So if he has that idea, and it sounds like he very well may, he's just wrong on that. <clears throat> Anyway, then I continue. A CBDC <clears throat> is computer code. It can be programmed for good or it can be programmed for bad. To make a blanket statement espousing the sentiment that no central bank digital currency computer could, could, code could ever exist that would be beneficial to society while retaining personal freedom is an incredibly unsophisticated, illogical, and incorrect position. Is it really your position that it's impossible to write open source computer code for a CBDC that would harm society? If so, wow. Any technology can be abused. Any technology can be used for good. The technology itself is not the problem. It's how people use it. So rather than disavow the technology, how about you help, make, help to make sure it's not used to harm people? Your draconian approach to this complex topic is unreasonable. And so I just I just kind of wonder, like, how is he okay with the internet existing? Because that, that can be and is used for bad stuff. Uh, cryptocurrencies can be and are used for bad stuff. It's a small percentage, obviously. The dollar can be and is used for, for you know, nefarious purposes, illegal purposes. Do we just get rid of everything that exists? Just, just get rid of it all? And then do we just not advance with technology? Should we just shut down AI and everything else? Just no more technological advances. This, we, this is the epitome of perfection right here. We have achieved it. No more technology, period. Stop progressing. There are always dangers associated with this. So let me expand upon this a little bit further because I haven't even gotten to uh, you know, the specifics of how I really feel about this. Because here, now we have Warren Davidson speaking about the concerns. And I'm actually completely on board with, with the concerns because... If not done properly, things could go very poorly. And so Warren Davidson, in a separate thread, wrote, and it was on this topic, though, <clears throat> in every dystopian future, money is corrupted from a stable store of value and efficient means of exchange into a tool for co coercion and control. CBDC is a tool for tyrants, the epitome of a permissioned network and opposite DeFi. China links CBDC with social credit. So, uh, folks, yes, communist China, yes, linking CBDC to social credit store, uh, credit score. That's not something I want in the, in the United States. Of course not. What does that have to do with the concept that is the technology CBDC? That's a way in which it can be abused, is it not? 
you know? <laughs> so here was my response, and this is where I really want to flesh this out. So if you've got a few minutes, please hang with me here, because I haven't even gotten to the good parts of my argument here <clears throat> in terms of the way I'm actually looking at this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wrote back to him and I said, do you realize that a permissioned central bank digital currency can still be open source? And folks, <clears throat> let's, let me pause right here. Recognize this, please. Right now, what we have is a centralized monetary system. You realize that, right? It's a, it's a, you call the database. It's a bunch of ledgers, and some of it's in, you know, you know, private entities and public entities. I got it. There's, you know, there's banks, and then, you know, the government has, pick your entity, there's a ledger. I, I understand all this. So, but, but anyway, the point is, you're talking about when it comes to the control of the government, that's centralized in terms of the printing of the dollar, the control over it. The absolute and utter control already exists. It's just instead of utilizing blockchain technology via central bank digital currency, it's centralized in complete and utter control by the federal government with old technology. You understand that the opportunity for abuse exists either way, right? I'm not sure if Warren Davidson gets that. That's the part. And, and so look, and I've brought up concerns in the past. I, I, in fact, I've, on at least one occasion, I just brought up, a concern. again, I'm all about addressing the concerns. And I brought one up and I said, you know, a concern for me is that if you remove, um, you know, if you create a central bank digital currency and, and you remove as a result, you know, any sort of middlemen like banks or this or that, then if the government does something that is illegal and overreaching, like they tell a bank, you need to shut down this account, and then the bank's like, for any reason, uh, no, that's, uh, you know, uh, constitutionally not allowed, or whatever it may be, just whatever the hypothetical is. The, there's an extra layer of defense there, potentially, because then the bank could say, no, we're not doing that, even though the federal government's insisting that they do that. So there is an extra layer there in theory. But does that mean that there, it's impossible to set up a central bank digital currency where there's powers you know, with different branches, because I understand, like, when it comes to, in the United States, I mean, if you're in the United States, you're probably aware of this, obviously, that there are different branches of government. You, you can separate powers. There's ways to do these things. You can make it so that there isn't complete and utter control by one particular branch or one particular individual or this or that. There are ways to do things. And already, you know what we have right now today? There are already all sorts of instances where government the, the, in the United States is doing certain things that are an overreach or illegal. I mean, I don't want to get, I don't want to get anything political, so I'm not going to go beyond that, but this is obviously true. I think that we'd all agree that there are instances where, where such overreach occurs. So it's, it's already happening either way. And so what you, what you have to do is push back in those instances. So whether the overreach is with the old technology, which is a, a centralized database, or if it's with a centralized, um, a centralized central bank digital currency, you still have to push back against that either way. You're still going to have that struggle. It doesn't go away. And people are going to get what they want. Whatever they, in the United States anyway, because it's a free enough country still. So if there's tremendous overreach, like I'm telling you, in the United States, you're not going to be, the government's not going to be able to get away with what the government in China's trying to do, what they're implementing, actually. You can't do that here. People won't stand for it. Absolutely, they won't stand for it. That's the part that matters. <laughs> The societal freedom. And so again, here's, here's the rest of what I wrote. So to start off, let me just, I read one sentence over. Do you realize that a permissioned central bank digital currency can still be open source? Um, that means that everyone on earth can see what the rules are without question, even if the U.S. government has control over it. And, and let me pause to just highlight the degree to which this impo is important. So any CBDC, of course, it's going to be centralized. There will be special permissions for the government that is in charge of it. But that doesn't mean that the code for it can't be open source. It can be open source. It absolutely can be open source. And I'd be against any central bank digital currency for which the people don't get to see the code. The answer is no. That's a hard no for me. That's what because that would lead uh, to too many potentials, uh, too much potential for a power that we can't see developing in the background. That, for me, that's a hard stop. And so I, this is me recognizing that there is danger potentially to central bank digital currencies. But there's, again, danger to the Internet and cryptocurrencies in general. Let's just address that instead of saying, no, that technology can't exist. And, and think about it. I mean, even with Twitter, which is now known as X, 
you know, Elon Musk, like, so that's a centralized platform. It's a company, right? And the platform, the technology is centralized also, but he open sourced the code. He literally gave the code out. I'm not sure if you guys heard that. It was big news in recent months whenever that happened. The, he literally handed out the code because he wanted to have a certain level of transparency. So my point is, you can have a closed system. You can have centralized control by the United States government with a CBDC, but still have the code exposed so the public can see it. And there are ways absolutely to verify that's true. And there's no shortage of tech nerds out there that would be able to find if there's some sort of, uh, you know, overstep this or that. But again, whether it's blockchain, I want to bring this point home again, whether it's blockchain technology in the form of CBDC or whether it's a database, which we have today, which exists, it can be abused no matter what. Powers can always be abused. It's up to the public to push back when those instances occur period. We're always going to have to do that. That's not a new problem that occurs because a central bank digital currency uh, technology now exists. Absolutely not. And I then wrote, you could then argue that the U.S. government could change code and reduce financial freedom in some way, but that's a poor argument because government can do that right now, even if blockchain technology had never been invented. If a CBDC is required by Congress, by law, to always be open source, then if anyone tries to sneak some tyranny code into it, the people will know immediately. And so, folks, again, I just, I wanna, I'll just scream it till I'm blue in the face. It doesn't matter if it's blockchain or if it's a database with no blockchain technology. If the government wants to overreach, then they're going to try and overreach. So the only way to make sure that doesn't happen or, or reduce the likelihood of it is to have open source code. That's it. That's it. If anything, it's more transparency. You know, are there are, are there people auditing the Fed? Are there people auditing, you know, the, the any sort of database from the central bank in the United States? Is, is any of that happening? And, and you know, not that this would necessarily allow that that like it, it depends on how it's coded, but in terms of the abilities of the platform, I know that you could make that note. That is that that's not a question. Absolutely that could be done. I then wrote, the technology is just a tool. Regardless of whether or not it exists, the people of this country must always be diligent in the face of encroaching tyranny. CBDC technology does nothing to change that. I will be against any CBDC that isn't open source because citizens deserve to know what's in the code, just like citizens deserve to know what's in legislation passed by Congress. It's the exact same idea, and that's where you're missing the mark. Again... The technology is not the problem. People are. Right. And so, and again, it's not even just, so I keep saying, you know, it's you have the same threat whether it's blockchain technology or database, but, I mean, your, your Congress gets to control all this stuff, right? Passing, you know, pushing to get bills passed and the president signs all that jazz. Well, they, could, they, they can go off the rails regardless of whether or not blockchain technology exists. I just don't know why this is so hard for Warren Davidson to grasp. I guess maybe if it's just something that sounds good, you know, from just a party perspective or for future campaigns or this or that, because it's a simple idea that most people aren't going to sufficiently think through. I don't know if that's part of what maybe it's just a politics thing where rather than get into the weeds and explain a, a you know a very complex topic or have a discussion about it, just, you know, give some get the fear out there and then just make some base level assumptions and comments which are false that sound scary. But, hey, without digging in further, maybe they sound kind of smart. I don't know if, if that's all he's doing here, uh, because this is not some very, like what he's saying here, it's not very thought provoking. It's not very, it's very shallow. It's not very deep, the analysis that he's providing here. I don't know how he couldn't see what I'm articulating to you here. If you spend more than like five seconds thinking about this, the technology is not the problem. It's the people that are the problem, period. And, and I'll, I don't pretend to have all the solutions for how a C CBDC would have to be in the United States to make sure that it's not going to present any more risk than what we already have from existing government. But like to state that it's impossible for humans to do that is just insulting. Like we, we, we can't figure this out. There's, there's no way that humans can figure this out. There's no way to type up a code so that that can't happen. It's just impossible. Can't be done. I don't believe, I simply don't believe that. So anyway, you guys let me know what you think, but uh, that's, that's pretty much where I stand on this thing. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.